Okay, so we're going to be talking about special products today. These are essentially shortcuts for when you're multiplying polynomials. You don't have to use these polynomial shortcuts. You can always just multiply them out like you're used to using foil, vertical, or box method, whichever you prefer of the three. But he, these are some shortcuts, and you do get these on your formula chart for the STAR test, the EOC, um, and any other test you take in my class. So we're going to talk about the three different types um, of our special products. The first type is a square of a sum. The square of a sum is that you're, there is a sum right here, this binomial, and you're squaring it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend we don't know the shortcut. I'm going to pretend that I don't know. So when you see something like this, you're going to have to go back to our exponent properties and you're going to end up having to expanding until you understand. So we're going to expand these out and this entire binomial is going to be then written two times. So now you've got a plus b times a plus b. I'm going to go ahead and use FOIL when I'm using just letters just because it makes it easier for me when I'm doing it as compared to box method. So we're going to do our first which is a times a and that gets you a squared. Then you've got outer a times b inner b plus a and lastly you have b times b which is b squared. Um, before we go ahead and combine our large terms I do want to point out that right here even though we've written it as ba the standard form for this would be a b and they're both the same thing. It's essentially like saying 4 times 3 versus 3 times 4. At the end of the day it's still going to be 12. We carry our b squared down. There's nothing to combine with it. No variable that's the same with the same exponent, so I couldn't combine it with the b squared. These two end up combining like we were talking about earlier, where this is just an ab. When you've got two things adding together, it's not your exponents that, say, that change, it's your coefficients. And that's super important for you to remember when you're adding, your coefficients change. When you're multiplying is when your exponents end up changing. In our a squared, we had nothing to combine it with, so we bring it on down. And then this would be our answer a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Essentially what that's saying is that this first term in your binomial squared, the second term in your binomial squared, and our second term of our trinomial, our middle term, our oi, if you want to call it that from FOIA, our o and our i, it's going to be your first times your last and double that. So I've multiplied my a times my b and I've doubled it multiplied it by 2. Which means if we were to have a problem like y plus 3 squared, I would have y squared and 9 as my first term and my last term respectively. My middle term would be 3 times y and then doubling that. Which means you get y squared plus 6y plus 9. You know what, You just like I told you at the beginning, you don't have to use this. So we're going to pretend like we don't know what this is talking about. And we're going to go ahead and expand it until we understand. So I've gone ahead and used the box method for this and put the binomial, each of these binomials on here, y plus 3 and y plus 3. It doesn't matter where you put it because lucky for us, it's the same thing. y times y is y squared. And then both of these boxes are the exact same. This one is saying y times 3 versus the saying 3 times y or vice versa. So I filled them in both at the same time with 3y. And then our last box right here, 3 times 3 is going to get you a 9 and you're good to go. Um, just remember on box method on your diagonals, you have your like terms. So you're going to have to remember that 3y plus 3y is 6y and not 6y squared. Same variable, same exponent. If you need a refresher on adding and or subtracting your polynomials, please be sure to watch the other videos in this playlist.
and when you end up simplifying it, y squared plus 6y plus 9, which is the exact same thing that we had from our shortcut. So it doesn't matter if you use the shortcut or you use the actual FOIL or box method. It's still going to end up giving you the same answer. We're going to do the same thing, and we're going to go a little bit quicker when we do square of a difference now. Square of a difference is the exact same thing as square of a sum, except now in the middle of your two terms, you're subtracting. I'm going to go ahead and still expand until I understand and pretend I don't know the shortcut. So I've got a minus b times a minus b. I'm going to do my first, which is a times a, gets you an a squared. Outer, a times negative b, which is a negative ab. Inner, negative ba. And last, negative b times negative b, which gets you a positive b squared. Remember I told you you need to know your integer rules. You have to know negative times negative is a positive and positive times negative is a negative. Before we combine the like terms, same thing here. This is a negative AB. It's the same thing as negative BA. Negative 4 times 3 is the same thing as negative 3 times 4. They will both get you negative 12. So our B squared comes on down. Nothing to combine it with. Negative AB and negative AB, that's going to be 1, 2 of them. So your coefficient is going to be a negative 2. And then you write it in standard form, which is AB. A squared had nothing to combine with, so you drop it on down. And then that's your answer. That's your shortcut right there. A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. Your first term squared minus double your first times your last plus your last term squared. Which means if we have a problem like x minus 4 squared, we know that our first term squared is going to get us x squared. Our last term squared would get us positive 16, negative 4 times negative 4, getting you a positive 16. And then your middle term is going to be negative 4 times x. And then when you double that, you would get negative 8x, giving you the final trinomial of x squared minus 8x plus 16. but we're going to pretend we don't know that. We're going to go ahead and expand until we understand and write out x minus 4, that binomial, two times because of our exponent. And this time I'm going to use box method again. Same thing as our last one. It doesn't matter if I, where I put it because they're both the same. And even if they weren't the same, it won't matter as long as you have the binomials together or trinomials. I went ahead and did x times x first, which gets you an x squared. And same thing happened as square of a sum, where this is negative 4 times x, but this is also negative 4 times x, which gets you negative 4x in each of those boxes, and this last box being a positive 16. Again, in box method, along the diagonal right here, you've got like terms because they've got the same variable and the same exponent. Negative 4 minus 4 is going to be giving you a negative 8x. Now, your other ones right here, x squared and 16, nothing to combine with, so you just write it in, and you end up getting x squared minus 8x plus 16, which if you remember was the exact same thing we got when we used the shortcut right here. Again, you don't have to use a shortcut, but you are more than welcome to use this rule. You do not have to. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about this third one. This one is a little bit different than the square of a sum and square of a difference. This is actually a difference of squares. So it's not even set up as something squared. It's set up as a plus b times a minus b. So literally, there is a difference here. 
in your signs. And when you see what our actual shortcut is, the name makes complete sense. So I just went ahead and wrote it down again so that I could apply my foil arrows. Um, if you don't use those arrows anymore, good. If you do, that's okay too. So we're going to go ahead and do our first term, which is A times A gets you an A squared. Our outer being an A times negative B gets you negative AB. Our inner being B times A, which gets you a positive BA. And thinking back about our other ones, this is, of course, a positive AB as well. And then you've got positive B times negative B, which gets you a B squared, but you've got a negative B squared because a positive times a negative gets you a negative. You'll notice something in the middle. And that's when I said, whenever I told you that BA is the same thing as AB, you've got a negative AB plus a positive AB. So these two are actually going to zero out and they're going to end up canceling out. So you're only left with A squared and negative B squared, and you can't combine those two. So you drop them down and both of these are our answers. A squared minus B squared is our shortcut which means if you've got something like this, x plus 5 times x minus 5, it's going to be your first term squared, which is x squared, minus your last term squared, which in this case is a 5, so you're going to get x squared minus 5 squared, and you knowing your perfect squares gets you a 25. This can also be the case if you have x minus 5 times x plus 5. It doesn't matter the rule, the order of these, as long as you've got opposite signs in the same contents. So if it's x and x, 5 and 5, and just the signs are different in the binomials, you've got a difference of squares in front of you. But say you don't want to use a shortcut. Let's go ahead and box it out. I went ahead and put x plus 5 times x minus 5 here. You could also have it swapped and do x minus 5 times x plus 5. I went down the column this time and I did x times x, which gets you x squared. Negative 5 times x getting you negative 5x. And then I work my way here, which gets you 5 times x. That's a positive 5x. And then 5 times negative 5 get you a negative 25. You've got your like terms on the diagonal, but in this case, positive 5 minus 5 gets you a 0, and they cancel out just like they, just like we thought they would with our FOIL. Our OI terms right here, our outer and our inner terms, they end up canceling out. x squared and negative 25, they don't combine. They're not like terms. So you just write x squared minus 25, which is your final answer. And it was also the original thing that we had right here. So you have all three of these shortcuts and you're more than welcome to use them. But whenever you foil box or vertical, they're going to get you the same answer. You don't have to use the shortcuts. If you want to use them, once you get into algebra two, you're definitely going to be using these a whole lot more. So you want to be prepared for that. That's all I've got for you. Make sure you've gone over all of the videos in the playlist and you've gone over everything. It's going to be super helpful for you on your test. 